Google did not disappoint with a big collection of announcements and updates at Google Cloud Next. We're gonna dissect the biggest announcements here on Cloud Tracker. Let's hit that intro. For Pluralsight, I am David Tucker, and this is the post Google Cloud Next episode of Cloud Tracker for GCP. Let's kick it off with our featured announcements from the event. First up, we have Google continuing to create an even larger hybrid cloud story with Google Distributed Cloud. This should be no surprise for those of you that have been following GCP here on Cloud Tracker, as we have seen a steady stream of announcements related to Anthos. This new solution, which leverages Anthos, enables organizations to leverage this distributed cloud either in their own data center, their own edge locations, such as regional offices or even retail store locations, one of Google's 140 plus network edge locations globally, or get this, 5G LTE edge locations from supported telecom providers. Now, this launch includes two products under this overall collection of services, Google Distributed Cloud Edge and Google Distributed Cloud Hosted. Learn more about the products from the link in the episode notes. Next, we have native GraphQL support on Apigee. While this was formally announced a few days after the last Cloud Tracker episode, it was certainly discussed also at Google Cloud Next. Now with this managed service, you can leverage many of the core Apigee features, including things like OAuth 2 support, API keys and quotas from your GraphQL policies. Check the links in the episode notes to get more information on how to get started with this exciting new feature. Next up, Prometheus has become a standard for monitoring in the cloud space. While you can set up and install this yourself on GCP, there are some challenges that come with making it work at scale. Google is attempting to solve this with the new managed service for Prometheus, which is now in private preview. This service is designed from the ground up to leverage the same data store as cloud monitoring, while also being able to serve as a drop-in replacement for your current Prometheus installation. To request access to this private preview, check out the link in the episode notes. Now, we've discussed a few of the announcements related to Google's focus on sustainability within the last several months here on Cloud Tracker. Google has been leading the way by letting customers make informed decisions on where they run their cloud workloads based on the environmental impact of each region. At Google Cloud Next, they took things to the next level with their carbon footprint solution. Now, according to Google, users can measure, track, and report their carbon footprint. Now, this tool resides directly in the console, and it allows you to see the carbon footprint of your cloud workloads as well as the ability to export the data for further analysis. Google has also made it clear that it intends to do even more to enable customers to make the best decisions for the environment with their cloud workloads. This summer, Google announced Vertex AI, their new unified machine learning platform for GCP. At Google Cloud Next, Google announced the next advancement in this overall platform with Vertex AI Workbench. This solution provides an environment for the entire lifecycle of your organization's data science process. To begin with, this solution provides a managed compute layer with Jupyter to handle experimentation with your data, while also providing the security and user management capabilities needed for today's organizations. Now, this solution also provides a way to connect to the services housing your data on GCP. After the experimentation is complete, you can also deploy the solutions from Workbench directly onto Vertex AI. This solution is currently in public preview, so check out the episode notes for instructions on getting started. Finally, Google has announced the Cybersecurity Action Team. This A-team approach from all over Google is designed to lead the efforts in this space. According to Google, it has a singular mission, supporting the security and digital transformation of governments, critical infrastructure, enterprises, and small businesses. As their first initiative, they have announced the Security and Resilience Framework, which delivers a roadmap for a security management program. Check out the link in the notes for more information. First up for our platform updates, Anthos is expanding beyond the container realm with Anthos for virtual machines. This feature for Anthos, which is now in preview, enables you to leverage your vSphere VMs or leverage your existing VMs utilizing KubeVirt. Check out the link in the episode notes for more information. Next, Google is extending Cloud Build to your entire cloud ecosystem with Google Cloud Build Hybrid. With this feature, you can run Cloud Build workloads pretty much anywhere thanks to Anthos. 
The solution itself is based off the open source Kubernetes framework Tekton. Now also announced at the event, Google has announced that additional build integrity capabilities will be included with Cloud Build. This includes the ability to validate images prior to deployment with the new binary authorization capability. Check out all of the Cloud Build updates in the episode notes. Google Kubernetes Engine Autopilot has been updated with some new capabilities. This includes the ability to leverage committed use discounts, mutating webhooks, and pod level security controls. Check out all the details in the notes. Next, Google has announced a new preview feature for Cloud Spanner, their PostgreSQL interface. Now, this feature enables organizations to use the same wire protocol, client drivers, SQL dialect, data types, and metadata while storing their data in Cloud Spanner with all the benefits of the service. While this feature is not designed to meet 100% compatibility to Postgres, Google has stated that this preview release is the first in a much larger long-term investment in making Spanner more open and accessible. You will need to sign up if you want to access this preview, so check out the link in the notes. Finally, Google has announced that BigQuery Omni, the solution that enables organizations to query their data across cloud platforms, is now generally available. This solution has the ability to interact with data stores like Amazon S3 and Azure Blob Storage. Now, with this announcement, you can begin working this into your production workloads. For this month's learning resources, I have two resources, both from Google Cloud Next. First up, Google has provided the sessions from the conference online, and this can enable you to dig a bit deeper on any of these announcements. You can filter this list of sessions by the topics that you're interested in, or just search for the services that you want to dive into. Check out the link in the notes to get started. Next, Google has announced the Google Cloud Cortex framework, which is a collection of resources, including reference templates and architectures that show you how to deploy a given solution on GCP. First up in this framework is SAP. Now, this initial component of the Cortex framework includes recommendations for BigQuery, including BigQuery ML. Now, these solutions enable you to be up and running faster on GCP with common enterprise solutions by leveraging the expertise of Google and their collection of partners. Thanks for joining us for this month's Cloud Tracker for GCP, the Google Cloud Next Edition. You can find links to everything I've discussed in the episode notes. Remember that this is just the start of the cloud announcements season. So be sure to watch for upcoming episodes on Microsoft Ignite and AWS reInvent if you want to learn more about those platforms announcements. Now, I'll see you next month to discuss what's new in the cloud here on Cloud Tracker.